Hi there. As people who tune into my channel are aware, I'm an enormous fan of the Topaz suite of tools. I've watched them develop from the very earliest stages to go through to the AI versions, which were mind-blowing. And basically, I thought at that point, they couldn't do anything to make it even better. But the developers of Topaz have come good again, and they've brought out another brand new app. This one actually consolidates all three Topaz apps. You've got Sharpen, you've got Denoise, and Gigapixel, all bunched together in one app, which will process all three together automatically on something called Autopilot. You've got to see this, it's absolutely incredible. It will take your image, analyse it, and apply one or all of these processes to actually make your image really stand out. Wonderful. So I've already done a, a tutorial and review on the product itself, which I'm going to put a link below in the description for you to follow. There's also a link there, should you like what you see, to actually purchase the product itself. You can try before you buy, uh, although that will leave a watermark. But once you buy it, if you use the link below, for the next four or five days, I think uh, it was, the offer is still available. You can, in fact, actually get a whopping $40 off. So, since posting the review, I've had a few people come back to me and say, is it possible to batch process using Topaz Photo AI? And I've looked at this myself as a particular interest because as a wedding photographer in particular, I was really keen to see if I could do this in one job. And as it happens, yes, you can. So I'm going to show you now how you go into Topaz AI, bring as many images in as you like, and then edit just one of those images and apply it to all of them. Saving you time, effort, a lot of headaches processing multiple images one after the other. Hi, I'm Ken Hadfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. Okay, here on the desktop, this is what you'll see when you first open up the program. And I suggest you look to the right hand side. Everything that's happening in the program is itemized on the right hand side. And it'll be worthwhile looking through these uh, features for user guides and, uh, and, and getting started. Of course, you could check out my previous video, which gives a very detailed explanation on how to use the program. Uh, I'll put a link to that below. But for those who haven't seen the previous video and not sure how this works, I'll just do a, a brief outline of how the program works before we get down to showing you how to actually batch process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring an image in and uh, I'm going to use a sample image here that I've lifted off the Topaz site. They do encourage you to lift these samples so you can have a look and see how the program works. I've not touched anything and already it's looked at the image, evaluated, decided which of the features to use to make the image better and you'll see to the right hand side here, when you see the little green light, that means it's finished processing. It may take a little while on your computer because I have a very fast computer, it's the latest Mac, and the processor is super fast. Uh, yours may take a little longer. But what this has done is it's analyzed the image, it's seen already that it's a small image, it's upscaled it automatically by four times. It hasn't used uh, noise removal and it hasn't used sharpen. What it's done instead is done face recovery. So where you see the blue tabs here uh, that are toggled on, that's the actual process it's used. And it's got a green light there to say it's finished that processing. If you look to these symbols to the left hand side, it explains what it's done. And what the good thing about this is absolutely adaptable you can change these settings if you want it's saying there that it's detected one face and it's processed one face and the the strength here it's selected is at 80 you can change that but it always reminds you what the setting they think is optimum which you can go back to at a later time basically i don't mess with this on almost all the images i've processed so far i've not had to do anything else just looking down here, this menu bar at the, at the bottom is the different views that you can have. You've got the full image view, you've got a side-by-side -side comparison and what you can do, you can slide that along to see the before and the after. And I think you can see that. I'm actually going to enlarge that just a little bit, just to show you clearly what it's done with the image. Bring this down a little bit. It's processing and then what you can see now is what it's done. It's done a grand job. This is 400%, so it's never going to be super sharp. It's when you bring it back down to 100% that you can see. That image is absolutely beautiful 
it's an amazing amazing feature and uh, we've got the side by side comparison again you can see quite clearly what it's done to the image to improve it and this simply shows you the size of the image itself you can change it uh, to fit the screen or you can actually move up to you know up to 800 percent so that's the basic premise of this tool is that it actually allows you to bring in an image and without even touching it will analyze it and apply one or all three of the gigapixel sharpen or denoise features to actually make this image as perfect as possible and i can't explain just how useful that's been over a period of time and this new update has just made things even better so let's go back to uh, what we were going to do originally i'm not going to save that i'm simply going to go to this little menu here click on there and close the image so if we're going to do a, a batch process and i'm only going to bring a few images and you can bring as many as you like what you should do is if you've got a lot of images put them in a folder and you can just drag the folder in but i'm going to just take these three these are three wedding photos i took in the lake just in the uk and uh, basically you had the bride and groom on the end of a jetty with the beautiful lake behind them this is an unprocessed raw file and as you can see it's brought the first image in it's already analyzed that you can tell it's finished because it's got the preview updated and you can then see by checking the toggling here what has it done it's removed noise that it's found and it's sharpened the subject it hasn't done anything with the faces because the faces are not facing the camera but it knows that they're not full face so again very clever so if you look down here it's brought all three images in here it hasn't processed that one or that one if you click on those images it will do what it's done here is it's processed the first one and if you see the settings here in the box here it's told you what settings it's actually used so if you see it's got raw normal nine percent and standard 22 percent so if you go over here and look here it says raw normal at nine percent and then if we go at the sharpening it's standard at 22 percent so it actually tells you down there what it's done now at this point if you want to apply that to the other two images all you need to do is click go to apply current settings to all and you apply that however let's just check so we've got remember raw nine percent standard 22 raw nine percent standard 22 on that one raw nine percent 22 it has applied it to all if you want to do further alterations and amendments to the images one at a time you can still click on that image it'll bring it in it'll reprocess it you can see it's processing up here and uh, if you hover over subject it actually shows you which part of the image it's applying the effect to so it's removing noise and sharpening but only to where the masked area there the pink masked area you can uh, make an adjustment to that if you want so if you actually click on the subject tab it'll bring down an adjustment uh, panel so if you want to add or remove the, the mask you actually use one of two brushes you've got ai brush and regular brush i use a regular brush because it's it's easier to use and it's to me it's more accurate you can use the, uh, the brush size there if you want and then simply paint where you want the effect to happen similarly that's just very rough but similarly if you want to subtract you just paint and subtract the mask to wherever you wish to remove the effect then you simply apply and it's done that effect so it's actually edited that one image even though it's been back processed you can go back and tinker with them to make sure that each individual image is perfect for anyone like me who has a wedding photography where you can bring in a batch of images and make a, an adjustment on all of them by just adjusting one photo that is going to be huge because that saves such a lot of time and i'm sure an awful lot of people who are watching this will see that by using batch processing in topaz photo ai you also are going to be able to save an awful lot of time processing multiple images that are very similar and just need a, a little something to make them pop so that's it batch processing so easy so effective see you next time on the better photography channel